Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today's wine story is related to the Napa California white wine of Chardonnay from Chateau Montalena. But first, I feel inclined to provide a PSA about this clean wine. Some celebs appear to be going straight Dunning-Kruger model with their wine venture. I'm all for slapping a pretty face behind a product to boost sales, but some of their claims appear to be a little misleading. Personally, Hollywood actors and their marketing teams are not the authority that I turn to uh, to teach me about wine. Uh, there are real regulations on wine quality and wine production and real terms that have regulated meanings. Clean wine just isn't that. Like you, you sitting there, you're a champion. And I know you can do your own research to make up your own mind. Sure, I'm an amazing resource. And we can travel as we discover new adventures of wine. But there are some awesome resources out there in books, not tabloids. Wine is a lifelong journey. And as we pursue this happiness, there comes a deeper understanding. Stay vigilant and questioning what you're being told is truth. And together, we will all find peace. Today's journey takes us to the Judgment of Paris, the story within a story. So pour yourself something nice, sit back, relax. I'm your host, Wine Broski. Welcome to Hot Tub Happy Hour. today does not begin with the famous 1976 wine tasting in Paris that was put on by Steven Spurrier. No, today's story starts way before the event that put California wine on the map and opened the door for New World wines to have serious consideration in the wine world. Now, like all good stories, it starts at a party, a wedding to be exact. Gods and goddesses gathered from a all around the heavens for this ceremony, joining Peleus and Thetis. These two would later birth Achilles. I hear it was a magnificent festival with fantastical beasts playing in the courtyard and the sounds of joy floating on the air. Hope and love filled the halls at this gathering. Banter and flirtatious vibes resounding through the cloud crowds. You see, Zeus had purposely left Eris the goddess of discord off the invite list. Who could blame Zeus for wanting a gathering without disagreeable conversations? Of course the snubbed god Eris didn't appreciate this, so she decided to crash the party. If this sounds like any holiday, wedding, or graduation with your family where you'd like to just have a wonderful time, but disagreements and stressful conversations sour the experience, Take solace in that even Zeus couldn't keep Eris at bay. So Eris arrives and immediately starts ruining the vibes. With her, she brought a golden apple from the garden of Hesperides that had to the fairest inscribed on the apple. With almost no hesitation, three goddesses claimed the golden apple to belong to them. Hera, Zeus's wife, uh, made the first claim, followed by Athena, the god of justice and combat. And lastly, Aphrodite, the goddess of love and seduction. Looking for an authority to rule on who would be awarded this most wonderful prize, the three goddesses turned to Zeus. Now, for those of you who don't know, Zeus may have been king of the gods, but he was a little bit of a player. He typically was on thin ice with Hera. That aside, there was just no winning for him if he was the judge. He would have been screwed either way with his decision. Picking his wife, he would have been accused of playing favorites, or pick either of the other goddesses, and well, ugh. So, Zeus did what any smart man would do, and that's get the heck out of Dodge. Zeus named Paris, a Trojan man, to be the judge. So a little backstory. Before the wedding, a competition to judge the best bull was previously held where Paris had entered his prize bull. He was also the judge, but he conceded that his bull was not the best. It turns out he conceded that his bull was not as worthy as Ares himself, who had taken the form of a bull unbeknownst to Paris. This showed Paris had great honor and honesty. 
Okay, so Hermes guided the three goddesses down to the spring of Ida and prepared them for the judgment where they then met up with Paris. You have to realize it was likely well known that the gods were partying pretty hard for this wedding. And here you have a mortal that has just been summoned to judge three of the most powerful and amazing goddesses. So he did what any mortal man would do in this situation. He protested that he could not decide a clear winner since they were wearing clothing. Now, I don't know what kind of apple this was, but the three goddesses disrobed for Paris. That's, that's pretty cool. Pretty smart thinking. So legend holds that they disrobed. Hera's insecurities showed from her experiences with Zeus's infidelities. Athena stripped like a linebacker ready to hit the showers. And Aphrodite, my words and adjectives could never do justice to the elegance and grace, the comfort yet wild adventure she exuded as she disrobed. Maybe I'll be a tease and not tell you who he picked. Aphrodite's. He picked Aphrodite. He's a mortal man. Of course, he picked Aphrodite. Now, how does this story relate to wine in the Chateau Montalena? A tasting by Steven Spurrier, a British wine merchant, pitted the Chardonnay of California against those of Burgundy at an event titled the 1976 Judgment of Paris. This California Chardonnay from Montalena won. Of course, the French called foul that the Burgundy wines had been mishandled on the trip from the vineyards to the tasting, but it doesn't really matter much because it was officially put that New World wines uh, could hold up to Burgundy. In the, same, in the time after, traditions and conventions within France were called into question and wine practices in the old world were examined and improvised. It is true that America won both the events, the white and the reds, but when it comes to the red, California Cabernet was competing against the cab blends of Bordeaux. So Bordeaux reds are a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Cab Franc. Stag's Leap Cellars won for the best reds, but it's not really clear what wine available today would represent the wine that was presented at the Judgment of Paris. In the end, the red wine comparison wasn't much of a comparison since so many variables were altered, but the whites, it was a Burgundy Chardonnay versus California Chardonnay. Today I drink this wine and I can taste not only the Chardonnay grapes with its crisp green apple notes and assertive yet delicate malolactic notes that give it an oaky, buttery, almost pie-like taste, but I can also taste the distinctiveness, the finesse, the winning that is ever present with the Chateau Montalena. As a storyteller that loves a good embellishment, I can't recommend Bottle Shock enough. This girl supposedly wasn't even real. Just a plot point, entirely fabricated because we love a good romance in our wine stories. But they do a good job of communicating that she might not really even be there. I mean, who would have a girl like that living in a house room out in the middle of nowhere that doesn't even have four walls? I'm all for woman empowerment, but I don't think anyone would look at this house and be like, sure, that's, that's where I'll internship and, and stay here. This is a good idea. I'd like to request that you please subscribe below and like this video if you've made it this long into the happy hour. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers so I'll be able to put a direct link on my channel page to my website. And with your help to get me there, uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. When I get to 100 subscribers, I'll open my favorite bottle of champagne and share it with you all. I'm pretty excited, so help me get there fast. So thank you all for listening. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Uh, cheers, this is Wine Broski. Got my flamingos. I got all my animals floating around. <laughs>